Morning, everybody. Wanted to film a quick note today about a couple things. Um, sovereignty, rejection, and desire. And let's start with sovereignty. Sovereignty is the autonomy over one's being, which seems contradictory to non-duality in the sense that we are all one and we are all interdependent on one another. But when one wakes up from the world of the dream, they're waking up from the realm of bondage. They're waking up from imprisonment, which is what the dream is. The personal I is the world of, um, it's a cage basically. It's the identification with the thoughts and the identification with the beliefs, the identification with the minds, feeling states, and all other types of phenomena that cause, um, you know, this dreamlike state of feeling bondage. So sovereignty arises in this waking up process and one establishes an extreme amount of autonomy, primarily due to the intuition that's evolving or rather being um, established the sentience, the sensitivity, or this intuition. They're all essentially one thing, okay? And so when one starts to realize, oh, okay, this is how I really feel, and not like the way I thought I did. This is what I really want, not what I thought I wanted. Um, this is truly um, my path, not the path that I thought I was on. This is the real me. This is the real path. This is the aspect of me that's actually eternally true. The one that never lied to itself. The one that never got lost. The one that never bought the dream, right? It never bought the story. The one that stayed eternally faithful to its own inner knowing. Right? So you have sovereignty coming up against years of conditioning, trauma, programming, nervous system responses wired into the body that cause a lot of discomfort. So you can have some, uh, what's the word, not rupture, but when something goes up against something else and it, it's not seamless. Well, that's kind of what, what happens in the waking up process, right? So these deep, deep, eternally... Um, pure desires are arising, right? Desire to love, desire to connect, a desire to be true, desire to tell the truth, to be authentic, to live in a way that is harmonious with, with not only the body, but symbiotic with one's environment, one's um, understanding of reality, right? Um, so again, this is all sovereignty. It's all coming into one's um, true power, true source of power, the one eternal being, which is what you are. Um, so what did I say was next? Um, rejection. So w when this power starts to kind of like gain momentum, or rather you actually start to establish your identity in this formless being or truth, then and, and you come up against the small you, the small I, this you that, you know, used to speak up and get yelled at, that used to try and express a desire for something it wanted, and, you know, you got rejected for it. Um, you wanted attention, love, and approval, and you didn't get it. So this narrative of self-rejection um, in childhood, early childhood for most of us, and actually, and I'll probably be talking more about this down the road, um, the effects of the perinatal canal and in utero programming, because we're actually um, already, our nervous systems are already getting programmed from the first trimester of birth. So your body's already learning how it's going to respond to stressors before it's, you know, like eight, eight weeks old in the in the mother's belly so anyway um these are all uh, unconscious forces that are shaped um generationally by the parental structures and that can't be an independent entity either because they're shaped by their environment the culture the spirit of the times the political landscape and all kinds of things so it's really 
not necessary to find the origin of where these things are, are rooted from, but it is important to recognize if the energy of rejection in the form of not being able to speak one's truth, to be one's truth in the world is occurring, right? Because sovereignty is an active principle. It's a principle where you actually make decisions, where you make choices, where you speak words, establish connections, um, communicate in a way that is true, right? That's essentially the embodiment or the integration aspect of awakening. And so when that comes up against this, this um, sometimes even existential rejection, right? I don't belong here. I shouldn't even be here, then that has to be recognized and that has to be understood, right? That one's unable to stand in this power, to express this power, and to allow it to infiltrate every aspect and every area of one's life. So the third thing I think I said was, was desire. Or, um, what did I say? Anyway, desire I think is where I want to take this because... The, the new navigational role isn't the desires of that realm of bondage, those unconscious desires that were programmed, you know, to get you sitting on Netflix or on your Nintendo for 10 hours eating chips. And um, those are all avoidance mechanisms. And we are so naive to even think that meditation or a nice walk in nature is healthy for us. But so many times these mechanisms are hijacking um, our behaviors in such a subtle way that we don't even realize that we're not sens sensing into what's truly in our bodies, which is the feminine principle. The body's the feminine unconscious because we are so programmed into doing and doing is the way that we um, cover up this, this rejection, this core wound of rejection. So desire reevaluates itself and it reestablishes itself as a focal point in non-duality at a certain point. But really what it's doing is it's authenticating the self, small s. So it's establishing a primary um, root system in a sense in one's psyche, in one's body, in one's... Um, relational world based on that sovereignty that's been recognized based on that autonomy that's appearing and so for me and i've spoken about this in the past few videos if you noticed there had to be a total stopping of desire and of of seeking and a suspension of all of that in order for the body to reorient itself okay it's no different than you have a little tiny caterpillar my husband had these gigantic green caterpillars on his tomatoes eating his plant last night, you know, and then he's like picking them off the plant or whatever. But, you know, that's that's what's happening. We become these these um, cocoons, these moths, um, or these, uh, not moths, I'm sorry, these, uh, these, you know, decaying little baggages hanging suspended in the air waiting for our wings for the butterfly to emerge for this freedom for this truth I mean it's so nature so brilliant in the way she describes our essence in all her different ways shapes and forms she's so brilliant um, and so the bottom line is now your desires have a different landscape to them, a different texture, because they're rooted in spiritual essence. They're rooted in the being of who you are. So when something arises, it's very pure. It arises directly from the heart, not the mind. That's the shift that, that's that been made. That's the caterpillar going into the butterfly, um, the transforming into the butterfly. You've transformed fully into your heart. And the key here is... To, and I know a lot of you are going to get what I'm talking about because I talk to a lot of you that are going through these things. Um, but that that heart is going to look and seek for expression at some point, right? And it could just be something as simple as like, go gargle with salt water, you know? It could be as simple as... Um, as simple as, uh, I mean, my point is it's an intelligence, right? Love is an intelligence. 
and it's a heart it's a harmonious state of being and i believe or i think i sense that um that there's quite a bit of healing in that not only for ourselves but also for the planet at large if we can tap into that and understand that that's actually what's happening and not second guess and question these processes um these cycles and they're talked about by many people in many different ways so just people will hear things in their own time and through their own vessels their own you know points of contact that makes sense for them if, if this is resonating with you then then deal with that sense of rejection by um, not rejecting yourself anymore you know are you stuck somewhere that's a form of rejection are you not able to stand up for yourself that's a form of self-rejection are you not able to show up how you really want to show up in the world self-rejection um start to start to act on the things that are emerging through your body mind portal start to move into them take action start to listen active listening um these are things that i live and they make sense to me so hopefully this is a lands for you in a place that is um connected and i'll see you guys soon i know it's been a while it's been a long long while but here we are right um it rained you guys know about all the rain happening out here on the west so this is the the reason i could go out today because it cooled off significantly it's, otherwise it's too hot i mean seriously this is the hottest summer they've had here in the desert probably for the since 13 years um anyway hope you're having a great day wherever you are i'll see you guys soon bye bye